morning, everyone. My name is Amitabh Mal, and I have the proud privilege and also the beginner's pressure of kicking things off here today, helping to do the best that I can. Uh, my, I am a partner and director at the Boston Consulting Group, as the MCs told you. Uh, I have been with the firm for 16 years, and I am what they call a career consultant. Usually when they say that, they don't mean it as a compliment. What it means is that this is the only job I've ever had. So for the last 16 years, which is probably a few years less than probably the average age of this room, uh, I've only done consulting. Uh, it has a lot, lot of upsides. I've had the chance to work in some fantastic cities. I started in Mumbai, spent time in New York, did some work in Toronto, in Sao Paulo, Ho Chi Minh City, Sydney, so I've traveled the world. More importantly, when I've traveled the world, I've had the opportunity to work with some remarkable business leaders. People who have inspired me, people who've encouraged me, and people that I've learned a lot from. And while there is no one formula ever for a great leader, uh, what I'm hoping to share with you today is some of my observations and learnings of what makes great business leaders. But I'll not just do it as one of those seven habits of effective people kind of list. I actually want to do it in the context of another love of mine, which is writing. Uh, many years ago, when I was uh, 20 years old, I thought that I wanted to be a writer, and I actually borrowed some money from my dad, printed a business card with a journalist, and went, down, went over to editors of magazines and newspapers and said, look, would you give me a break? And a kind editor actually did that. And very soon, I had written more than a half a dozen uh, feature pieces. Uh, the moment I joined the world of business, and I, and I joined business school, that world got left behind, but it was always there somewhere under the surface. Last year, after 15 years of being a career consultant, I took a sabbatical. And some of it was spent in this fine city of Iowa uh, as a part of the Iowa Summer Writers Festival. It felt like a magical world. It felt like I was just surrounded by a very different set of people that I would normally be surrounded by. Writers, uh, people who wanted to talk about writing, aspiring writers and established writers. And in that, I actually realized that all these years as an avid reader, while I feel I can appreciate good writing, what I got to do in that time in Iowa was appreciate good writers. And what I took away from that was a few things that I see writers do incredibly well. Uh, and while this is not necessarily a checklist, but these are four that I'd like to share today, where I feel that great writers are able to explore beyond the imagination that normal people have. Great writers observe. They see the same things that we see, but they see them differently. They have a point of view, and they're not afraid to share their perspective. And lastly, they are masters at showing and not telling. What I'll do over the next, I guess, 12 minutes or so is walk you through examples of great writing and what I mean by these four and bring it back to the world of business. Let's start with exploration, always a good place to start. Uh, Peter Tershi wrote a book about the craft of writing, and I would like to quote from the book. Eventually, we find the story not despite failed efforts to find the story, but through those efforts. This could almost have been Christopher Columbus talking about finding America when he went looking for India. Uh, and it does actually feel like that. I remember the first story that I ever wrote started about descri describing the stuffy heat of a load shedding town in small town uh, Orissa. Became very soon a love triangle, and then eventually, was the story of a boy discovering that he was gay. I did not start with that thought in mind. I started with something, and the writing led me on. And that is about exploration. And I think the best writers from what I've been told by instructor after instructor at Iowa are people who let the writing write and don't try to shape the writing. In the world of business, uh, there are countless examples of people who've gone exploring, and I'll, I'm here to talk about one of them. Uh, anyone see the very recent movie, Founders, The Founder? Quick raise of hands. Okay, a few. So for the rest of you who have not seen the movie, well, spoiler alert. It's about Ray Kroc, the founder of uh, McDonald's, the chain with 40,000 stores around the world. Uh, interestingly, McDonald's was not a business. That was not the first business that Ray started. In fact, he started his career selling paper cups, went on to be a real estate agent, eventually was uh, selling restaurant equipment, and that's when he discovered this, the first McDonald's, which is run by these brothers in San Bernardino, California. And he loved the idea. And his explorations had taken him there, and he decided to take the plunge. 
And what he started with that at that point of time is today a $25 billion business. Clearly, his explorations, uh, and this was when he was in his mid-40s is when he actually did this. Uh, he was not afraid to try new things, and that's what uh, led to his success uh, and what we see as a great establishment today. So the first lesson, at least I take away, is great writers explore. They go beyond uh, what we imagine, and that's what great business leaders do as well. The second trait I want to talk about is observation. This is, and I'm sorry, you can't probably see it very clearly. This is John Fulford's A Walk to South School. Uh, you know, basically a story on a page. It's essentially a route map of a child going from home to school. And there are all the different destinations that the writer talks about. As an example, right on top, there is Dr. Coombs, Dr. Coombs equals vaccinations equals ouch. Somewhere down there, it says the greatest tree house ever, ours. You can sense the feeling, the emotion of ownership, of the pride and the joy of probably countless afternoons spent on top of the tree house. My favorite is somewhere on the top, you can see it says stone wall. And you can walk by the wall, but it says always walk on top. Also, a, a good place to ask a girl to go steady. Everyday locations, everyday emotions, but brought to life by writers who are able to observe and see something in the same things that probably you and I don't when we are thinking of it. Observation is also usually a great inspiration for business ideas. Uh, I want to talk about at least one of them, a product that we use probably quite regularly. I know at least my son just loves gobbling these up. The Originally, many years ago, uh, Cheese used to be sold in slabs. And people would have to slice it into small pieces or into, into slices and put it in sandwiches or in burgers. Someone saw that. Someone observed it and realized that people did not like the wastage. People did not like the variations in size and shape that it would lead to. Someone innovated on the product side and created something which is now a multi-billion dollar business. A uh, simple observation of how people eat sandwiches and how people consume cheese, which led to an idea which is seen as a business success today. So observation of everyday things, which leads to great business ideas, is another thing that business leaders, best business leaders are able to do well. Next, I'll talk about sharing of perspective. For this, I'll actually you know, take your license, and while my talk said what business leaders can learn from writers, I'll veer away and talk about a couple of other uh, streams of creative space as well. Let me start with this map of the world. Anyone notice anything odd about this? Speak up. It's upside down, that's right. Who said that North should always be on top? Who decided that? It's a matter of perspective. It's the same facts presented in a very different way which make us think about the world differently where Australia on top and Alaska is at the bottom. So it's all a matter of perspective. Here's another example. Two paintings side by side with exactly the same subject. It's someone soaking their feet in a tub and having drawn it. What makes it interesting is if you think about who the people are and who the painters and what perspective did they have in mind. The one on my left, I guess your right, is by the famous uh, Mexican painter, Frida Kahlo. Uh, and she was known for her, and is known today, even today, for her imaginative self-portraits. So you see, you know, and I'm not sure I, I you know, pick up all of the nuances here, but you see a toenail with a little bit of blood trickling down. You see a, what looks like a dead bird on top of a tree. You see a skyscraper with smoke coming out, coming out of a volcano. Uh, and I don't know, frankly, what some of this means, but the painter had a perspective that she wanted to share. The one on the right is by uh, George Bush, the junior, American president 2001 to 2009. A relatively bland and plain perspective, but his perspective nevertheless. Exact same subject matter seen differently with a very different perspective. And I feel that the best business leaders actually are good at what they do because they put a stake in the ground. They are not shy to actually have a point of view. They Sometimes the point of view will be based on facts, sometimes based on what the teams tell them, and sometimes based on pure intuition. I remember a few years ago, uh, an industrial conglomerate had asked us to look at the feasibility and the attractiveness of setting up a manufacturing plant in China. Uh, 
team worked pretty hard over six weeks. We did all the analysis and came to the conclusion that the real cost benefit was almost marginal. There was no, for all the hassle that they would have to go through, it was not worth it. So I remember going to the boardroom and presenting to the CEO, saying that's what our point of view was. And she turned to me and said, Amitabh, let me share you, with you my point of view. I'm going to do it. And I'm like, but why? Look at the facts, look at the data. She said, let's call it an entrepreneur's call. We are going to do it. We went ahead and did it. They set up the factory. Five years later now, uh, it's actually, you know, our numbers have turned out to be exactly the way we had estimated. The cost benefit has been frankly marginal, but the team of, of that organization, which has actually worked in setting up the factory in China, has learned so much about manufacturing styles and cost systems in China and has been able to bring it back to their factories in different parts of the world. That is not something that we could ever have calculated or estimated. So it's been a great learning from that point of view and hence, you know, a perspective. One of the best examples in the world of business leader with a perspective is a business leader that touches many of you. How many people with an iPhone here in the room? Quite a few. Uh, so Steve Jobs is probably the master of this. When he, uh, you know, first came up with the Macintosh, it was in an IBM dominated world where the systems were just not compatible. But the Macintosh had creativity. The Macintosh had romance. And the Macintosh had the vision that Steve Jobs went ahead with. And then he repeated it again with iPod, with iTunes, with iPhone, with iPad, just again and again and again. Probably one of the best examples I can think of, of just having a point of view and having a perspective and sharing it to the world. In fact, he is very famously known to have said that he doesn't believe in customer research or consumer research because consumers don't know what they want till someone tells them what they want. That to me, my friends, is an example of sharing a perspective, having a perspective and sharing it. The final piece I'll talk about is uh, what writers in the world of writing, and I had not heard this term before till I went to Iowa, uh, called show, not tell, which is a skill that great writers have. And I will, uh, there's an extract here from Arundhati Roy's uh, God of Small Things, and I'll read some parts of it. I know it's very small font, but I'll read some of it for you. May in Imanam is a hot brooding month. The days are long and humid. The river shrinks and black crows gorge on the bright mangoes in still dust cream trees. Red bananas ripen, jackfruits burst. Dissolute blue bottles hum vacuously in the fruity air, then stun themselves against clear window panes and die, fatly baffled in the sun. The nights are clear, but suffused with sloth and sullen expectation. Look at the richness of detail in that. A reader reading it can actually imagine that main imanim. And what use of colors and language? In the same passage, there are dust green trees. There is an immodest green in the countryside. And there are brick walls that turn moss green. All green, but very different versions of green, evoking very different imagery in our mind. And this is all about the detail, about getting into the detail. Now, you may be wondering, what does this have to do with business leaders? Should they be in the details all the time? Actually, no, on the contrary. Best business leaders zoom up. But the point I wanted to make is that the best business leaders are the ones who lead from the front. They are not afraid to roll up their sleeves and jump in and fight it out when they have to fight it out. One of my best examples of this is, uh, so I do a lot of work in retail and one of the best parts of my job is actually visiting retail stores. I love being in stores where strategy becomes reality or actually is a very poor strategy and you find it out in the stores. And a few years ago, I was uh, in Punjab visiting the stores of a major retailer. It was sweltering hot, and I was with the CEO of the business. And we were very happy that we actually went inside the store, air conditioned, nice, we walked around the store, everything looked good. And then the CEO said, let's actually just do a quick huddle in the back room. The entire store staff and myself, and we all went into the back room, and I thought he was going to give them a pat in the back for a very well-run store, look nice for the store, for the customers. Instead, he goes, and he picks up this fire extinguisher, and he raises it, and he says, how many people know how to use this? It's mandatory by law to have a fire extinguisher. And also, since they have one, it better be useful, and hence people should be able to know how to use it. And he asked the question, and they were all very honest. Two of them said, raise their hands, and everyone else looked down at their feet. I thought he was going to give them a lecture. I thought he was going to tell them why it was really important for them to do it, and he was going to, well, not be very pleased about it. Instead, he just smiled and he said, come with me. 
We all trooped outside, back in the sweltering heat of Punjab, and he took, lifted up the fire extinguisher, went through the steps, and actually operated it on the ground. There was no fire, luckily. One by one, he got every single store employee. And remember, he's the CEO of the company. These are the lowest paid employees in the firm. He got one by one, all of them, to take the fire extinguisher and actually operate it for a few minutes till they all felt comfortable. That is a lesson I can guarantee you they will never forget. That's the power of showing, not telling. That's the power of a leader not being afraid to get into the details and actually doing what he expects his or her team to do. And yes, that is Jon Snow from the Battle of the Bastards. I'll end with a quote from Anton Chekhov, one of my favorite short story writers, one of the most gifted ones I would argue uh, that uh, you know, our generation has read. Talent is long patience. There are many people, and many of you sitting here, who will be great business leaders. Many of you have the talent. And I would argue that while there can be all kinds of lists that you see in business books out there, my submission to you is that if you want to be a great business leader, there are four things that you need to keep in mind. First, you have to have the courage to explore, to go towards the unknown. You have to have the discipline to observe, to pay attention to those details and see in it beyond what everyone else is seeing. You have to have a perspective and you have to have the confidence to share this perspective as yours and take the fall for it when it goes, when the calls go wrong. And finally, you have to have the humility to show and not tell. Thank you everyone for the time. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much.